Some days when you're feeling good, real chummy, you say to your friend, just casual conversation, North Africa, dude, the great Sahara and its people. Wouldn't it be cool to hang with the Tuaregs one evening, a campfire in the desert? Sun tea. Albert Camus, part 12. I think I'll begin with a story. Early on in my life, when seeking, searching for career prospects, I've spent time in cities where the summer temperatures would hover around the 50 degree mark. Of course, there was air conditioning, on demand, climate control, and all the rest. But if you want to play in the sun, get out. Then you've experienced what I call the solar charge to your brain in these conditions. And if that is the case, your case, then I'd say you'd find this story coherent. This story is from the city of Algiers, Algeria, circa 1927. There's a bunch of kids, early teens. It's the summer holidays. No summer vacation with the family for these boys because their parents have to work. And so here they are, exploring the streets of their working class neighborhood. It's an extraordinarily hot day. They see a man coming out of a dusty barber shop. Strange posture, body leaning forward, head thrown back, farther than possible. Indeed, not possible. His white shirt stained with blood. What had happened was the barber, while giving the man a shave, had gone mad, snap, and with a single blow of his razor, cuts the exposed throat of the customer. Of course, the barber was immediately subdued by the other customers. He had realized what he had done, and in horror, began to howl. It's stories like that, which you don't need too much imagination to believe. I had used lines from Pink Floyd songs earlier on in the series, and here again, this one seems to fit. Song titled Time. And I guess this is more applicable to, you know, some of us who have crossed a half a century mark. In my case, 57. The line goes, the sun is the same in a relative way, but you're older. Shorter of breath, one day closer to death. Isn't it true, in some way, that the sun and the sea, they appear as symbols in all of our lives? In the case of Albert Camus, Camus scholars would point to the obvious. They'd say, he was a kid who was born and brought up in the shores of Algiers, the desert sun of the Sahara, the warmth of the South Mediterranean Sea would certainly make an impression on anybody living there. And so the exploration continues. You descend further into the cave, as they say. We should imagine a spherical image, or even a pear-shaped image would work. And if we were to look cross-section, it would be equally occupied in terms of balance by the sun and the sea. The role of mom and dad, the father represented here by the sun, and the heat of the Algerian sun with its ability to burn, has indeed burnt a hole in Camus' soul. And so there's this void, this emptiness in his heart, the disappointment, the anger, the sadness, the hurt from the absence of his father, whom he had lost in the First World War when Camus was barely a year old. And the mother, with her limited capacity for verbal communication, she plays the role of the silent sea, who's able to tide over his pain. Oh, I'm getting carried away, John. Help me. Now Camus, He's had some father figures in his life, good men, teachers, who were able to guide him, point him in the right direction. In the story of Albert Camus' novel, titled The Stranger, our hero Merceau thinks are a bit different. We come across a few characters who appear to be like father figures. The curious thing in these interactions is that they always seem to have a negative outcome. For example, we see Merceau's boss, they don't really understand each other. And the boss, he sees Merceau as sort of an idiot. Then there's the character of the prosecutor and also the judge. All hopeless cases. 
the outcome is net negative. Of course, in the whole drama, the most significant character in terms of the father figure is the priest. Now, the priest has already attempted to visit Merceau in prison a couple of times, but Merceau has refused to see him. But this is the third visit. It's sort of an indicator to Merceau too that time is drawing near. It's been a while in isolation. Merceau going through a myriad of emotions. this confusion, anger, the edge of insanity. In Goethe's Faust, there is this exact scene, a mirror reflection, one could say. Marguerite, who's languishing in prison, going insane, and just like Merceau, doesn't sleep at night, afraid of the dawn, because he knows at first light is when they come for you. Anyways, back to the priest's visit. He's in the cell. They're discussing belief in God, the kingdom of heaven. And Merceau, in despair, tells him, I have so little time left, unlike you, and you're asking me to discuss things I have no interest in. And finally, when the priest says, call me father, Merceau has this cathartic outburst. There's an altercation, and the gods hear the commotion. They come in to separate the two. Here the priest gestures to the gods to let them be. He leaves, giving Merceau this look of calmness, of pity. Of course, we know from the text that after this interaction, Merceau, exhausted, passes out, falls asleep. He wakes up to the grandeur of the universe, peace, calm, serendipity. The night sky is filled with stars. It's the image of the father. He has become a thousand suns. Does not have the burning effect anymore. And the dark blue sky that the image of these stars appear is the sea. So you have the mother and the father and him. It's a scene of reunion. It's a scene of both of them, mom and dad, welcoming him back home once again.